This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. And aloha. Good morning. Good uh, welcome to Community Matters. I'm the guest host today for the program. Uh, the regular guest, I mean, the guest, the regular host will be back for, uh, on the next program anyhow. Um, but for those of you who've seen me before, my name is Calvin Griffin, and we do a program uh, related to uh, the military. But um, uh, what we're tying in today with Community Matters is we have a gentleman by the name of Mr. Sandlin, and we got Mr. and Mrs. Sandlin joining us today. And again, what we try to do is enlighten individuals to what not only the history of uh, Hawaii, but also what's happening with the, uh, the military community and how it ties in with uh, today's environment anyhow as far as learning um, and explaining more about what happened in history. Right now, I want to introduce to the program Mr. and Mrs. Sandlin. Thank you very much. Uh, may I call you Russell? Yes. Please. And Mildred? Yeah. Mildred? Okay. Thanks. First off, could you tell us or tell our audience a little bit about yourself, your background? Uh, were you Navy? Or? Yes, uh, U.S. Navy. Uh, I was uh, two tours of Vietnam, 1972 74. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, came out to the Navy after six years. Okay. Were you what they call a brown water soldier or a sailor? Uh, brown water sailor, yes. Yeah. Mekong Delta, Saigon River, uh, lots of action involved, you know, with both of those locations, yes. Mm -hmm. What made you join the Navy? I mean, was there a family tie-in? It was a family tie-in. I'm third generation in my family of U.S. Navy. Uh-huh. Great. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know that you've been pretty busy uh, lately. Uh, like I said, you have a very unique um, collection of models here, like I said, a tie-in with... Uh, American naval history, but mm -hmm. before I we move on to that, uh, Mrs. Sandlin, Hi. tell us a little bit about yourself and how uh, you know you're helping your husband with the uh, the project. Um, of course, I came from the Philippines mm -hmm. and I'm a graduate, um, college graduate, and um, we just got married um, last year, 2016. Oh, congratulations! I'm yeah. gonna bake you a cake, you. but I didn't Thank know. You. You know. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. yeah. So what did you, uh, what was your major in college? Um, I took a Bachelor of Science in Hotel and Restaurant Management. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. I know in the Philippines is, uh, of course, with MacArthur, and most yeah, people are familiar with that, you know. So what is your knowledge of the, um, the naval history, not only with the Philippines, that connection, but also in general, you know? Well, I don't really have enough knowledge about mm -hmm. that. But, uh, of course, um, being my husband, uh, U.S. Na retired U.S. Navy, and mm -hmm. uh, I support him on what yeah. he's doing. Great. Okay. Well, so, how did you get involved with this? Because, like I say, I know that the uh, display that you've had set up, I mean, you've been around, the, uh, I think, not only around the country, but um, around the world in certain yes, sir. areas. Yes, sir. Uh, could you tell us what your, you know, what is the main, your goal, your mission to, uh, when you display your, your different models? Uh, the goal is si simply, you know, to uh, reflect history in the past, mm -hmm. uh, particularly American uh, history, influence, you know, uh, overseas. Mm -hmm. uh, I uh, donate uh, galleries, uh, ship models and cases. Mm -hmm. uh, I also do special uh, hiring of art, canvas work that I do. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, my greatest success with the United States Embassy in the Philippines a Olympia gallery uh, respecting uh, Commodore Dewey at the Battle of Manila Bay, mm -hmm. May 1st, 1898. Yeah. I know you've been honored in some, by so many different um, government levels or, you know, uh, about what you do. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about that? I mean, I know that a lot of people, when they come on the program, especially veterans, they really don't like talking about, you know, their different medals and awards and things of that mm -hmm. nature. But sometimes, like I said, it helps to get a better perspective, like say, how important uh, individuals out there and like mm -hmm. say in the higher echelons of government mm -hmm. or history uh, recognize what you do. So what are some of the things that you've been recognized for and by what organizations? Well, during the time of my courtship with my wife before we got married uh, I participated in two 70th anniversaries in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. The uh, 20th October 1944 mm -hmm. 70th anniversary I uh, was on television in uh, Longapo Philippines mm -hmm. uh, during a special honor of uh, the uh, 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 Leyte landings, MacArthur's final return, you know, mm -hmm. the first return, yeah. his promise was kept. And the second one was on January 9, 1945, at the Lingayan landings, the first one in uh, Luzon. Mm -hmm. uh, I was particularly interested to know 
recently before, that uh, my grandfather and my great uncle was at that landing. Oh. Yeah. The 70s ships that I built for MacArthur's Free at the Leyte landing mm -hmm. was donated to the MacArthur Park in Lingayen on the 70th anniversary, and I received a wonderful fanfare from the governor of Pangasinan, mm -hmm. uh, northern Philippines, and uh, I had uh, a wonderful opportunity for a speech uh, on uh, during the banquet that was there. Mm -hmm. And this is a wonderful opportunity for me to reflect American history in the Philippines mm -hmm. and try to join our countries a little bit closer together in the future. Yeah, okay. Um, I know that we talked a little bit offline anyhow, but one of the things that you know, I think you expressed to me is that the reason you initially got into model building I think it was a way of um, like a healing process for you or I see that again it was a type of a healing process for you as a part of yes into yes sir uh, I went into the VA hospital West Los Angeles in 2004 mm -hmm. uh, they were beginning to recognize issues of my combat uh, wounds that I had during that time mm -hmm. and took a long process uh, during that five months inpatient stay they supported me with the, my first exhibit at the November 11th Veterans Day commemoration ceremony in West Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And I was able to have my very first exhibit, mm -hmm. you know, during that time, uh, the U.S. Fleet 1941. Right. Okay. I know that uh, there's always issues that we hear about what's going on with the VA and the issue about PT, that PTSD. With what you've been through, and again, focusing on, on the models and not only, you know, helping you to focus, but also as far as, you know, spreading the, the word of, about what's happening since historically. Mm -hmm. Have you been asked by the VA, or is there any organizations you've been in touch with uh, that would that you know encourages our soldiers or you know our service members who want to you know they're battling this issue, mm -hmm. but you know making suggestions to them they may not necessarily deal with ships, but you try to encourage them in other ways as well. Yes. Yeah. Um, all the, for example, the service organizations, the FRA, uh, Navy League, mm -hmm. uh, all of those, you know, support, you know, helping the veteran who have PTSD and other issues mm -hmm. to uh, have activities that help them keep themselves under control, uh, do something respective and honor, you know, to give them uh, their self-respect as well. Yeah. Good. Okay. Now let's get back to the main thing as far as what the ships are concerned anyhow. How many different models do you have? And um, how are they constructed or as far as the being able to accurately reproduce what the actual ships look like? Well, they're actually plastic models. So. Uh, many of the, 90% of the uh, collection is actually from a model kit. Mm -hmm. uh, I learned uh, the issues, how do you build a ship using cannibalized parts, yeah. certain pieces from different kits, mm -hmm. using photography and using, you know, drawings that I was able to find. I was able to hone in on the actual designs using plastic parts. Right. Uh, plastic is an easy form of art. Yeah. It's easy to work with, easy to paint, easy to connect together with glue, right. and that's the reason why I'm using this kind of material. Good. Okay. I'll tell you, some of the display you have here now, could you point out what the different ships are? and uh, a little bit about their history. If you mm. Okay, um, I honored the USS Oklahoma mm -hmm. because uh, it's uh, not really known as far as her configuration at the time. She sister ship to USS Nevada, the only battleship that got underway during the attack at Pearl Harbor. Uh -huh. uh, also, Oglala, she was uh, 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 next to USS Helena on 1010 dock. Uh, she was not hit by a torpedo, but the explosion on the cruiser mm -hmm. made the ship uh, capsize and sink. Mm -hmm. uh, also, Sacramento, uh, she was a 1923 uh, gunboat mm -hmm. that was there at Pearl Harbor. Mm -hmm. uh, USS Utah, this is the only existing replica of Utah anywhere in the country yeah. so far that I know. Mm -hmm. uh, USS Argonaut, the first large submarine that we built in the 1920s, mm -hmm. uh, also used for the make and raid bringing Marines and tr troops, you know, ashore the island mm -hmm. uh, early in the war. Yeah. Uh, USS <coughs> Ward. Ward was the one that fired the first shot, you know, off of, uh, uh, off of uh, Pearl Harbor mouth. Right. And, of course, USS Honolulu, mm -hmm. which I had to bring here because of the namesake. Of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't allow you to state if you didn't, you know? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. And there's uh, several classes, several ships in that class, by the way. Right. I just picked the one that I thought was the best, you know, to interview and mm -hmm. to uh, show and tell. Mm -hmm. The Oklahoma, there's 
that's resting in Pearl Harbor? Uh, no. Oh, uh, Oklahoma, uh, she actually, when she capsized uh -huh. just outside of USS, uh, I believe it was uh, USS uh, Tennessee, I believe. Uh -huh. uh, anyway, uh, she was, uh, two years, you know, was eventually righted, you know, using a special cranes and wrenches, you know, that was mm -hmm. mounted on the shore. Uh, by the end of the war, she was refloated, and she uh, was towed to the West Coast uh, for scrap, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, she sank in a storm on the way. Mm. Well, with the Oklahoma, there, there is a uh, memorial over in Fort Island. Yes, right? yes. Okay, that's yes. what I got. Okay. Now, for Utah, what, there was another one that uh, rarely, a lot of people, a lot of the public may not be aware of, like, yes. say, on the other side of Pearl Harbor. Um, yes, sir. And is that the, is that the Utah, or? Yes, that is the Utah. Okay, yes. Yeah. And uh, I had to go through some 30 years of photography in order to find the right configuration involved with this reconstruction. Uh -huh. uh, Utah uh, is one of the three main memorials that are there at Pearl Harbor, USS Arizona, USS Oklahoma, mm. and USS Utah. Mm. And that's the reason why I brought Oklahoma and Utah here right. as a demonstration, you know, to this exhibit. Good. Uh, as far as with these ships, uh, have you talk to any of the original crew or you know met people that served on the ship uh i have met in my previous experiences and exhibits that i had 2006 2008 mm -hmm. uh survivors of the uss uh, nevada mm -hmm. they had a reunion you know in 2010. Right. Uh, i was able to meet three of the arizona uh shall i say yeah the uss arizona had uh, three sailors at a uh, Elks Lodge exhibit that I had in 2008. Mm -hmm. uh, I've met, of course, you know, in the last two years during the 75th and the 76th anniversary yesterday, right. uh, other Arizona and survivors. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, yes, I have been able to meet a lot of the survivors. Good. Uh, we all, you know, one th unique thing about being here in Hawaii with all the different veterans organizations and if things was going on, especially at the time with Pearl Harbor. Is there anything that you came across, any facts that were not widely known or not in history books that was imparted to you by either a crew member or we had, of course, we have the uh, civilian populace over here that was, you know, involved in the, or in the attack, anyhow, be it, um, subject to that, anyhow. Is there anything surprising that we don't know or you can share with yes, us that sir, will blow our minds? There's a lot of details yeah. that uh, might have been overlooked, maybe unintentionally. No. Um, the three battleships that were out board during the Pearl Harbor attack, Arizona was Division Battleship Division Three flagship. Mm -hmm. uh, right, Rear Admiral Kidd, he was the uh, divi uh, division uh, commander. Mm -hmm. uh, USS <coughs> Oklahoma and USS Nevada was part of the same Battleship Division Three. Mm -hmm. In all the photographs and pictures that you see at the attack, you'll notice that Arizona, with Vestal just outside of her, USS Nevada, which is moored alone, mm -hmm. and USS Oklahoma, moored just outside of Tennessee, were the first to escape from the f f harbor yeah. if there was an emergency or trouble. Mm -hmm. uh, only USS <coughs> Nevada was able to escape, yeah. of course, with Arizona's casualty and Oklahoma's uh, turning upside down. Mm -hmm. Uh, she was the only one out of Battleship Division Three that actually pulled away. Yeah. Okay. They would have been the first ones to leave if there was an, uh, call it a, a, an issue of uh, surface action, you know, outside the harbor. Yeah. yeah. As I mentioned, the, uh, they having the opportunity to be in the so-called media over here. Um, in the past, I was able to interview a gentleman that was here during the attack, and uh, actually said that there was a miniature sub that was buried on. Pearl Harbor. Yes. And come to find out, he was actually right. This was like yes. about 15 years ago, but nobody really believed him at the time. But so you know, it's been proven that it definitely was there. Yeah. Yes. Uh, there was a total of five miniature submarines that operated, you know, off the harbor mouth. Mm -hmm. One of them was uh, landed on the beach at Bellows Field. Yeah. Uh, the prisoner of war number one, you know, was the one that survived out of the two crewmen. Yeah. Uh, also, they I think they recently found the uh, submarine off of that the ward actually sank, you know. Yeah. And the other three submarines were found inside the harbor. Yes. Okay. Good. Tell you what, we're going to take a short break. I mean, this is so interesting. I don't want to get into other, com you know, um, issues like say I have to take a break. But right now, we're going to take a short break and um, join us back here in Community Matters with Mr. and Mrs. Sandlin and um, learn more about naval history and we'll say here in a while. 
Match day is no ordinary day. The pitch. Hallowed ground for players and supporters alike. Excitement builds. Game plans are made with responsibility in mind. Celebrations are underway. Ready for kickoff, MLS clubs and our supporters rise to the challenge. We make responsible decisions while we cheer on our heroes and toast their success. Elevate your match day experience. If you drink, never drive. Ted Rawson here, folks, your host on Where the Drone Leads, our weekly show at noon on Thursdays here on Think Tech, where we talk about drones, anything you to do about drones, drones, remotely piloted aircraft, unmanned air crystals, whatever you want to call them, emerging into Hawaii's economy, educational framework, and our public life. We talk about things associated with the use, the misuse, uh, technology, engineering, legislation, with the local experts as well as people from across the country. Please join us noon on Thursdays and catch the latest on what's taking place in the world of drones that might affect you. Okay, you're back with Community Matters and uh, again, I'm guest hosting today and uh, thank you for staying tuned anyhow. As I, before we, pre before we took the break in here, we were talking about Mr. and Mrs. Sandlin and um, again, about the history of the ships. Um, Again, I mean, there's so much to learn, you know, and unfortunately it seems like we're losing, of course, uh, the World War II mm -hmm. generation, you know, um, a lot of history that um, is being lost. And there's one thing that I have a lot of, <coughs> excuse me, with uh, some of the different organizations out there, they, what they try to do is um, get some of our veterans to talk about their, their experiences, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, what, I mean, what what do you try to do when you do talk to these people, the ones, the few that you're able to talk to? Um, again, what are some? What does the? What do you take away from that? Um, that's not in the history books, or you know, the feeling that they had. You know, a lot of them will say, "Well, you know, I just served, I did my duty, and everything else." But sometimes you find out there's some unique stories that some of these veterans, they're the last people on the face of this earth that know that particular situation. You know, that had an historical. Uh, in a historical, yeah, historical yeah. context, yeah. yes. Um, I have come across many veterans, yeah. survivors of Pearl Harbor as well as World War II. Uh, I came across a man that actually served on Helena, I'm sorry, uh, Honolulu. Yeah. Uh, other <coughs> ships, you know, San Francisco, which was part of the sea battles in World War II. Mm -hmm. uh, Nevada survivors as well. Uh, they've relayed to me some experiences. Mm -hmm. uh, one story that I remember was I read in a book, uh, the actual Torah 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 book, mm -hmm. about the USS Swan, a seaplane tender, up on a uh, ramp, you know, that was in dry dock. Yeah. And a uh, sailor, you know, was ordered by his chief petty officer to go into the smokestack to clear off, you know, a pelican nest that was blocking the exhaust, you know, off the engines. Yeah. The electrical <coughs> shorts, you know, was actually sh uh, shorted out and the ship had no power. Mm. So they were trying to start the boilers, but the exhaust was blocked, you know, by the pelican nest yeah. that was in the smokestack. Mm. So the uh, sailor was ordered to go up there to clear the smokestack. He was attacked by the uh, pelicans that came back to the nest, yeah. disturbing the net, the eggs. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, he's not only fighting the chief yeah. telling him what to do, yeah. there was Japanese planes flying around, looking at him, laughing at him as mm -hmm. he's there flying around. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I understand that the man received a, a medal, you know, for all of that work. Okay. I don't remember his name, but it was yeah. a wonderful story. Were the pelicans prosecuted for hindrance? Uh, I don't know, but I do know one thing. Those eggs were probably gone. <laughs> one of the things, uh, Mrs. Sandler, uh, with the Philippines, we know, of course, the um, dedication and mm. the service that a lot of uh, Filipinos had um, offered to the American, um, yeah. not only Navy, but different branches of service. What do you know? I mean, is there something to tie in with the Philippines that uh, a lot of people may not be aware of, um, you know, as far as, yeah, anything that you're aware of? <laughs> or being yeah. allies. Yeah. To be allies. You know, we are yeah. always in strong strength, you know, in yeah. our friendship, you know, with the Philippines. Yeah. Uh, we are taunt uh, protectors as well as allies. Yeah. Uh, we have a lot of issues, of course, in the South China Sea and other places, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but uh, we uh, are in the process of trying to maintain this kind of ally, this kind of friendship, mm -hmm. and I think it's an unendure. It's a totally enduring, you know, friendship. Oh yeah, I think that uh, along those lines, it's just like excuse me. <coughs> um, 
you have, um, yeah, there's always issues, like say, that, that go on, any other cultural issues with all that, you know, but uh, for the most part, you know, try, you know, in the, as far as the positive vein, where you have a lot of people who were from the, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of Filipino uh, nationals who did serve, I mean, admirably and, you know, with distinction, mm -hmm. you know, in the, um, uh, the Navy, you know, a lot of cases they weren't recognized as far as you know, their contributions, you know, yeah. but, um, you know, as far as getting the big picture, the overall uh, story, you know, I think it's important to get it from all, you know, from all the different sides anyhow, you know. Yeah, so, of course. Yeah. Okay. Um, in the future, what do you plan to do uh, as far as with your exhibits? And, um, yeah. What do you well, do? first of all, uh, <coughs> this the collection, in my opinion, yeah. and I've had so many people support me, mm. belongs in Hawaii. There is no other place on the planet that belongs other than Hawaii. The, yeah. the recognition of the history, mm -hmm. the silhouettes, you know, that I've been able to reproduce, you know, from, right. the, from the past history as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea, of course, is to keep it here as long as I can yeah. until I can find a permanent home for it. Mm -hmm. It belongs here. I have no intention of receiving any compensation whatsoever. Mm -hmm. The monetary value has no value to me whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for a permanent home for it. Okay. It belongs here. You have a organization or a foundation right now? No, uh, this is just a title called U.S. Fleet 1941 Recreation okay. Project. Yeah. Uh, I would probably like to go nonprofit in mm -hmm. the future, and I would use all the money mm -hmm. to be used for issues of veterans. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, World War II veterans' families. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think I heard something on the news yesterday, since it being December 7th, as of the taping of this program is that uh, President Trump had uh, is designating or trying to get in place uh, Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day. Uh, have you heard anything about that, or what do you think about That's that? That's the first time I heard about that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I do know that the president, you know, came here, mm -hmm. I believe it was about four to six weeks ago, to yeah. visit the Arizona Memorial mm -hmm. on his way to uh, the Far East. Right, yeah. Okay, yeah, I was, you know, I always found it curious, like, say, since the... Uh, incident here, you know, that the state wouldn't have recognized it as a, you know, a special day, you know, and uh, well, we'll see how it goes, you know, but I think with the way, um, again, we're losing so many of our World War II veterans, mm -hmm. anyhow, you know, mm -hmm. it has to be carried on, because when they're gone, you know, there has to be some sort of formal recognition, you know, that perpetuates, you know, what they sit for and the efforts, you know, mm -hmm. so that's it. Okay. Um, Again, with all the different ships, you mentioned okay, we've got the service ships, the sub, um, the submarine force. Uh, what do you know about that? How extensive is, is your knowledge on that? Uh, well, actually, uh, I have a, a small uh, reference book, you know, in reference to all the names of ships involved with the submarine corps, mm -hmm. uh, submarine service. Uh, this Argonaut, for example, was a 1927 design. She was actually a failure. She didn't have powerful engines. Yeah. They had to use her, you know, for more transport than actually submarine operations. Mm -hmm. uh, as the time went by in the 1930s, we began to get a little better, you know, with the machinery, right. a little bit better with the uh, operational weapons systems, you know, that was on board mm -hmm. the submarines. And by the time, by the 19, 1941, the first of the Gatto class submarines were actually commissioned. Mm -hmm. uh, two of them were commissioned before end of 41, yeah. USS Drum mm -hmm. and USS Gatto. Mm -hmm. Both of them were commissioned before January 1st, 1942. Wow. Okay. Yeah, a little about, you know, as far as submarine history, the only thing I know, John Holland, of course, you're familiar with that mm. name. Yeah, uh, in, my hometown, in my hometown of Pleasantville, New Jersey, oh. it's like they have a, uh, we had a shop and actually constructed one of the subs. Mm. I mean, the, in the beginning, you know, is, is there. The location is gone, you know, but just empty lot. But, uh, yeah, that's my time with the submarine service. Other than that, yes. I couldn't serve on a sub. I like sleeping with the windows open. You know, yeah, I think a lot days. of people feel the same way. Yeah. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> We're getting out to the wire. So, if there's any what from other information you want to put out, there's any contact information. If somebody wants to get more information, or they may have a, a piece of history that you know will help you to um, improve your you know your display, is there a contact number they can reach you? Yes, um, actually. Uh, I would give you my telephone mm -hmm. number, it would be fine. Yeah. Uh, you can contact me in Carson City, Nevada, where we reside, mm -hmm. uh, area code 775-883-0635. Mm -hmm. okay. Let me repeat that one more time, just in case they're trying to grab a pencil out there or something. Okay, uh, area code 775-883-0635. Mm -hmm. Okay.
All right. Uh, again, as of this date, I uh, understand that you're going to be at the um, Park Service. Uh, the when, it, when is your display going to be there? And for how yes, long? Uh, we are going to set up today for the uh, beginning of the two-day show the exhibit Saturday and Sunday, tomorrow and Sunday. Mm -hmm. uh, the exhibit will open at 9 a.m. on Sunday. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, tomorrow, Saturday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, we got a lot of preparations to do. Yeah. Well, sounds exciting anyhow, you know, but um, <laughs> you know, looking forward to, uh, to seeing it anyhow. If yeah. I may, mm -hmm. uh, we're setting the exhibit up as though it was actually a ocean view. Uh -huh. When people come in to take a look at the pictures, mm -hmm. you'll see sky in the background, you'll see the ocean down with the ships of formation. Mm -hmm. If you angle your camera right, you'll all so you see is sky and ocean. Yeah. That's the reason why we're setting it up special this way. Mm -hmm. Sounds exciting in any yeah, because at this at right now they don't there's nothing I know they have a few model ships over on Ford Island at the uh, museum and also at the Arizona. But yeah, this is definitely looks like a, a welcome addition, you know, to the uh, historical display. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you very That's much. A, very you know, wonderful. doing a great job. And, you know, uh, before I, um, yeah, before we get down to the wire, you mentioned about paintings. You say, you, do you paint? Do both of you paint? Or, um, oh, yes. Yeah. She's yeah. given me great, uh, mm -hmm. great support, you know, in, in oh. the painting process. Uh, the ships that you see here is actually, for example, Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. This is the way the camouflage was for about 90% of the ships. Okay. Uh, you still got a little bit more modifications to do. But uh, everything above the smokestack was a light gray. Everything below was a dark gray. Mm -hmm. At ranges of 10 miles or more, you couldn't see the ship to a gun director. Yeah. Because it was virtually invisible. Wow. Okay. That's the reason why we yeah. painted it that way. Okay. Well, uh, again, I want to thank you for, you know, both your efforts, uh, you know, getting the word out there and trying to, you know, enlighten, the, you know, our uh, citizens to what's happening with history. Um, and your future, I hope to uh, have you back on the program again and, you know, looking forward to going over and checking out the display. Like I, say, yeah. I'm, I'm I expect sure. to be back next year. Good, mm -hmm. looking forward to that now. <laughs> but um, again, thank you for your efforts. Anytime you get out there and try to do something that... Um, thank you, sir. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Okay. Thank you. Anyhow, um, right now, like I said, we're going to take a... Um, <laughs> this is it. <laughs> so... Until that time, as I mentioned before, I'm just a guest host today, but uh, tune in for Community Matters here on uh, Think Tech Hawaii. And uh, thank you for tuning in. God bless. And until that time.